In this video, we're going to cover Intellivision emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, not a whole lot new going on in this Intellivision tutorial, but wanted to get it updated to the new setup methods, so here we are. Now this guy does assume that you have installed RetroArch using one of the new methods provided in my RetroArch Xbox playlist. If not, refer back to that playlist, get RetroArch set up get it all good to go, then come back and do this tutorial. But let's dive in. To get started with Intellivision emulation, we need to grab a couple of BIOS files. The first being the exec.bin, and the second being grom.bin. Now these files can easily be obtained through numerous Intellivision compilations that have been released throughout the years, or you know, you could just resort to the shady parts of the net. Don't really care how you go about doing it, but you got to source these files and make sure they are named accordingly. Once you have these files sourced and named accordingly, we just need to add them to our RetroArch system folders. So if you've moved your RetroArch system folder to USB, just put that USB drive into your computing device of choice, open up the system folder, and then copy the files right on in. I already had them there, so I'm just gonna tilt to overwrite. If you are using FTP, go ahead and launch your Durango FTP server. Access your FTP file share through your preferred method. Local folder, find your RetroArch folder, local state, system folder, and then drag the two files right on in. And again, I already had them there, so I'm just getting tilt to overwrite. But with the BIOS files in place, we're ready to move on to game setup. Now, Intellivision games can come in a variety of formats, including .int, .rom, .bin. And again, you can get these from numerous Intellivision compilations released throughout the years, or resort to the shady parts of the net. Again, don't care how you do it, just source some games. And once you have your games sourced, you can leave them unzipped. You could zip them up if you want to. They're friggin' tiny, so your choice, really. You're not going to save a whole lot of space zipping them up. But if you want to, you can. But once you have your games good to go, we just need to add them into our preferred storage medium. So for me, again, I'm using USB, so I'm just going to go back into my USB drive, go into the games folder that I created, and drag them right on in. I already had them there, so I'm just telling it to replace it. Good to go. If you're in dev mode and want to store them on your S drive, file system, you can go back into your FTP file share, Xbox folder, S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, the games folder that you created, then drag them right on in. But with everything placed, we're ready to move over to RetroArch. Once you're booted into RetroArch and have your USB drive in place, if you're using USB, there's a number of different ways we can load up in television content. The first being load content, Head down to the drive you have your game stored in, so if you're using USB under dev mode, it'll be under E, USB under retail mode will be under D, or your S drive uh, internal SSD install. But find your games, find your Intellivision folder, select a game, and it should automatically boot up because there's only one Intellivision core. I personally don't prefer this method, a little long-winded, so what I like to do instead is go to import content and scan my Intellivision directory. If your games are zipped, scan directory will not work and you will need to do a manual scan. But I can select my Intellivision games folder and tell it to scan this directory. And now when I come out, I have a new Intellivision games playlist here on the left with all of my games right here. And one of the benefits of doing a scan directory option, you can head over to the main menu, online updater, and you can go to the playlist thumbnails updater and select your Intellivision core. And it should download some nice box arts for all of your games. If not, you can manually add them in later. I'll cover that in a separate video. But now we're ready to begin playing. So just choose a game, tell it to run. And you may need to select a core since uh, the scan directory doesn't automatically set one. But just set the core, tell it to run. And if you have all of your files placed correctly, you will be greeted by the title screen of your selected Intellivision game. Hooray! Now, Free Intellivision is actually a pretty cool emulator. There's a lot of nice features to it. So, if you press your Start button on your Xbox controller, you can access a nice little help menu by pressing your B button. It says press A, but it's Nintendo button mapping, so you can press the B button. It'll show you all of your uh, control options here. And remember, they are set to Nintendo button mapping, so you just need to be aware of that. So A is B, B is A, Y is X, X is Y. Kind of annoying, but whatever. So when you first start playing in television games, most games work right off the bat just with uh, the default button mapping. 
If for whatever reason you don't seem to have any controls, just press the back button on your Xbox controller and it will swap the port of your emulated controller. You can see here on the bottom that it's swapping between right and left. Holding the right shoulder button lets you, uh, lets you access uh, the keyboard there, so it's pretty handy. Now, another thing to note about the emulated keypad, if you press the Y button on your controller, it will use the last selected number, so if there's a game you're playing where you have to rely on a single number quite a bit, it's just a nice little quick shortcut for you. But that's pretty much going to cover it as far as Intellivision emulation is concerned. There's no core options within free Intellivision, and it's all just pretty dang straightforward. It's really nice. But one last thing I would like to cover here real quick before calling it is shaders. There's some nice shader presets you can apply to Intellivision games to make them look more authentic to the original experience. Heading into the CRT folder here, some of my favorites include CRT Royal for this type of uh, system. And then in the presets folder... You can also get even more crazy with this. You can try to like just do composite stuff and get it to look even more authentic. So, for example, let's do CRT Royal composite video. So, there's no such thing as a wrong shader. It's all personal preference. Go through them, find the ones you like, and then just run with it. But once you have the shader set up the way you like it, you can head back into the shader tab. Click on the save button and save them as a core preset so that way every time you load up an Intellivision game, this is a shader that will greet you. And that's going to do it for Intellivision emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Make sure you have those two BIOS files placed and then just enjoy your games. But big thank you for watching today's tutorial. Really appreciate all of you spending even a minute on the channel. But I do have a couple of huge favors to ask here at the end. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't already, hit that sub button notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Lots of content coming your way, and I would love to have you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further supporting the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping us going and bringing more content just like this to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome. Keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.